Welcome to another edition of Breakfast with Ed. Today we've got Golden Boy himself, Mr. Sean Stafford, my old mate, world champion, bodybuilder, entrepreneur, fitness model. We're gonna find out what motivates him, what keeps him in shape, and just how bad it would be to take me on as a project in the bodybuilding world. So come on inside and we'll see what he's got to say. So Sean, thank you very much for coming to press today. Mate, thanks for Breakfast having me. with Ed. We briefly like crossed paths at university yeah. on a rugby pitch. Correct. What was the journey from there to what you do now? It's been it's been one of those really roller coasters a bit of an extreme world, but one of those things where a lot of people when they leave uni don't really know what to do. And I would say that I was kind of one of those people. Um, I knew that I enjoyed playing sport. I played an average level of rugby, as you, as you probably remember. In order to be good at rugby, you have to kind of go in the gym. And kind of when I started playing for the university, they said, you know, you're skinny, you're tiny, you need to get in the gym and get massive. So um, I went away one summer and spent sort of every waking hour in the gym. Came back about a stone and a half heavier, but at the same time, fell in love with the gym. And then there was a bet that was the... Yeah, a colleague at work said, well, why don't we enter this fitness competition? And it was one of those ones where she said, whoever does, you know, let's see who does better. And so I think we both had about 12 weeks. We entered the show and... How did you, how did you, yeah, go on, and you won, right? We both won, actually. Both so won. yeah, so it was like she won the women's and I won the men's, which was, uh, so I don't know who won the bet in the end, but that's kind of what started the whole process in the sort of physique competing and fitness modeling. That was the British Championships, and then I think five months later was the Europeans, which I got an invite to, so I, you know, went back to the drawing board and made up a plan and entered the Europeans. I didn't get it right straight away. I'd say I didn't get it right until 2015. So four years later yeah. was when I actually had, came up with a program and a system that really worked for me. So you just watched Pumping Iron a lot? I watched Pumping yeah, Iron yeah. a lot. <laughs> you went very quickly up, right? Like by anyone's standards. Yeah, so I went from being an injured rugby player to being a world champion fitness model in 18 months. Which, yeah, which was a really ridiculous. sharp rise. But it was, I think it was, I'd always had the, the background of sport and then it was just refining you know chipping away some of the fat to reveal what was kind of already there best fat burning exercise so was that a silly question from, a, from an amateur <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that from someone who's actually a little tubby we're going to talk about that in a minute if you're looking at an exercise that burns the most calories yeah we can kind of say per unit of time this will burn the most calories in that unit of time yeah we then have the longer sort of bigger framework of trying to increase your metabolism by increasing lean muscle mass, so therefore you more effectively burn calories whilst at rest. They're not necessarily the same thing. Got it. So if you go if you go and do a, a hip class or a versa climber class, they're supposed to burn upwards of like 600 calories in an hour. Okay. You could very, you basically you couldn't do that in a gym lifting weight. However, what you would do in the gym lifting weights for an hour is start to lay the foundations for increasing lean tissue increasing your metabolism, which means you burn more calories. So there's two ways of doing it. You can either look for what's gonna burn the most calories right now, or put in a longer term plan of what's gonna burn the most calories over a given period. Of time. The gym, when did you open the gym? Talk, talk to us about that. Okay, so City Athletic, we opened, actually it was five years ago last week. Happy birthday. Thanks very much, mate. I went from being quite a successful PT to being a gym owner. And you know, I was working 100 hour weeks in the gym, unlocking toilets, hoovering up, just, you know, someone had to be in there. The glamour. Sick. The, the glamour, yeah. yeah. But going in and starting at the base, because basically we couldn't afford to, the business couldn't afford to hire people. What does the future look like for you at the moment? Um, it's one of those things where, if you'd asked me five years ago, the base there you go, could be, yeah, there. exactly. <laughs> yeah, we just wanted to show Q, off the sound system. Q, QB roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you'd asked me five years ago, would I be doing what I'm doing now? It would have, it would have not even been in my mind. Yeah, you just done something for Dollar Shave Club, right? I did, yeah, I did a little, Very little, cool. little shave shave. Yeah. Are you shaving? Oh yeah, I did it. And you've done fashion and you kind of, those opportunities are all coming up. Yeah, right? it's, um, as I said, you just never know when the next DM is gonna slide into your, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Into your Instagram <laughs> and yeah. it'd be from, you know, from someone that you, or a brand that you have always liked their stuff. Like I did a job for Samsung last week, nice. which was incredible. And it was trialing out all their new fitness tech and giving them feedback on it. Let's say I was gonna start, um, because, like I had a bet like your bet, and I had have you got a bet? six months. I do not have a bet, but I, I, I think I'm thinking one. about yeah, making yeah, yeah. a bet. Okay, so 
I'm going to start trading, what are the things you need to know first? If I was like saying, okay, I've got six months and I'm going to go try, I'm going to try and go on stage and yeah. enter a competition. Oh, <laughs> I'm not against that as a concept at this point because I find it, in, I don't really have anything to build towards in terms of going to the gym all the time. I so, completely get that. As in, one of the things is about tapping into some sort of motivation, as in what's going to, what's going to be your why rather than going out on a night out in Soho, it would be, you know, headed to the gym to... Wait, you've never heard me go out on a night in Soho. It's a good point, it's yeah. a good point. Um, the first thing I would do would be to see what you can realistically commit to in terms of time. Do you know what, you would be absolutely shocked what you can achieve in quite a short period of time. I've had people come to me for cover shoots for magazines that, you know, honestly, I'm not in great shape. Yeah. And you turn them around into being on the cover of a magazine in six weeks. Let's get a cover shoot. And then we'll make that the deadline. You could be the cover of Press Magazine, right? That's so, yeah, the squeeze, exactly. That's, <laughs> that isn't a terrible idea, just from an ego perspective. So that's cool. Okay, nice. We get some nice lighting involved. I actually well. don't think that's a bad idea. I think you've got to probably realise or come up with something that you want to do. And maybe this getting in the best shape of your life for a cover of the squeeze is what's going to help you sort of I like it. stay on track. And yeah. if that's the case, then that's something I can definitely help you with. You are currently veggie right now, right? I am currently veggie. How has that been from a, I imagine you've had a very like meat focused diet oh, for a long time. Correct. So my lifestyle, especially being competitive fitness has been meat five times a day for the last five years, wow. pretty much. Yeah. Um, but in terms of how I feel and do I feel a massive shift or a change? Honestly, no. Um, I feel colder. I don't know if that's got anything to do with anything. I, since I've been vegan, I have felt colder. Yeah, I have no idea. That's and I haven't said that to anyone because I thought it sounded weird. Yeah. That is honestly, I feel I'm de I'm never used to get cold. I'm never cold. I feel cold. I know. And weird. as I'm sitting here in hoodies. Yeah. But I, I know. I'm usually a shorts and t-shirt guy till December. Have you googled that? I haven't googled. I that. need to google that. Should I want to google find it? out. We're going to google it. We're going to find out. We're going to come back to come back so, to on that. Yeah, just just feed it along the bottom. Research says there is, there, <laughs> yeah, there is no link. A ticker, a ticker. <laughs> Unproven and yeah. unsubstantiated link these, between temperature yeah. <laughs> and diet. These, these claims have not been verified. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I feel lighter. Yeah. But in in the same way that an empty glass is lighter than a full glass, I'm certainly going to keep doing it until I feel like I don't want to do it anymore. But Can I think, you compete doing it? Yeah, there are there are there are veggies. Yeah, I, I've I seen. I think it's harder. Yeah, I think. To, so the macros, so the, the breakdown of protein, fats, and carbs that you need to optimize uh, sort of low body fat. Um, very difficult to do on a vegetarian diet. Yeah, you can get close to it, and then you can get. But you, not when you're trying to be the top. Correct. Five in when, the world. You, when you're really it. dialing in and getting to the nitty gritty of it. What motivates you or gets you out of bed in the morning? And has that changed? Oh, good question. I think there's always an, an underlying, you know, need to want to provide and, you know, provide a good life for your family and all that. I think that'll always be there, but I think that's, that's been there for generations. As in, a lot of people you know, get up and go to work and do jobs that they don't enjoy to put food on the table and a roof over their head and give their children and dependence the best life they can give and I think that will always be there yeah. I think we could probably divert away from that and say what motivates me to do what I do yeah there's an element of sort of success in there as in success sort of feeds success and if you find something that you're good at and then you find something that you enjoy doing and you're good at it and you enjoy doing it and you're good at it, it's, it's a vicious cycle that yeah. it's almost like you just get caught up in it I found myself now in a place where I have amazing opportunities I literally love what I do I love it. As in going to China and being able to talk to a bunch of 19 year old guys that are just going in the gym in China that have been following me on YouTube that, you know, have come out, you know, they travel three hours to come yeah. and see me just because they want to talk to me and, you know, they're inspired and, you know, the content and the message that I'm putting out there is really resonating with them. It's the best feeling in the world. There's definitely been a shift from that kind of live to train attitude yeah. into more of a train to live yeah. so it's enabling me to you know go for a run and be able to run quickly and if I want to go and hire a bike when I'm on holiday and cycle up a mountain I can and you know if I want to go and you know play football with, with my guys at work I can and it, so it's that training is now enabling me to do things in my life that brings me joy. Sean thank you so much for coming and having breakfast this morning Thanks, it's mate. been an absolute pleasure 
um, yeah, you're you're a, a role model for me in the sense of your journey. It's gone. It started in one place. Yeah. You've found a passion and you've taken it to being a business man on top of everything else. So it's awesome to see how far ahead you are. And uh, I'll be that. playing catch up for the next few years. All right, dude. Nice to see you. Thank you.